This week, the third Annabelle film and the seventh film in the Conjuring universe dropped in theaters. That means it's time to stop and rank all seven Conjuring films from the worst to the best. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Sean Chandler, and I started this channel because I was driving everyone around me crazy talking about movies way too much. If you can relate, you're probably in the right place and consider clicking that subscribe button. Also, with that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of The Conjuring films. Which ones do you love? Which ones bore you to tears? And everything in between. We're gonna disagree. That's the fun part. Let's just be respectful about it. Finally, this video is brought to you by Audible. Audible has a massive library of hundreds of thousands of audiobooks for your smartphone or tablet and you can get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial of Audible if you use the link down below audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. Since we're talking about The Conjuring, they have a bunch of books by and about Ed and Lorraine Warren, the people that The Conjuring films are kind of about. So you can learn the real story behind The Conjuring over on Audible for free if you use my link down below audibletrial.com slash Sean Chandler. With that said, let's get started. In last place is Annabelle. This is a very dull, scary movie where just not a lot happens. For most of the runtime, you either have a pregnant woman walking around her house looking scared or a woman who has a newborn walking around her house looking scared, but there's not anything in this film that catches your attention. The characters aren't memorable, there's not any sequences inside of it that kind of catch your attention, and there's not even like distinct visuals. There's not scary moments that stand out to you. There's not like a horrific way that people die. There's just nothing about this film that distinguishes itself from any other film inside of this genre or any other film inside of this franchise. It's the bare minimum it needs to do to be considered a movie that would be released in theaters. That's it. At number six is The Nun. This is a drab, exposition-heavy film where, once again, it doesn't feel like much happens. Once they get to the castle, it's like an hour straight of people separating, walking off into spooky environments where weird things happen, and then they come back together and deliver backstories and more exposition. It's also very weird that they cast Vera Farminga's sister as the lead actress in this film, as they look very similar. She looks like a much younger version of her sister, so it was kind of confusing for me. I was waiting for there to be some sort of plot twist that it's a sister or it's a younger version of Lorraine Warren or something like that. No, they just cast sisters to play totally unrelated characters, even though they look an awful lot like sisters. In a lot of ways, this film has the same faults as Annabelle, but at least here, it's an interesting location where things happen. I can kind of remember distinct things about someone being buried alive and images of people vomiting blood and the blood of Jesus and things like that, to where at least something about the film made a distinct mark on me. Some of the characters had a bit more spice to them, so this film has at least something about it that interested me. Coming in at number five is The Curse of La Llorona. This is an okay, generic haunted house film elevated by a cast that's better than the film that they're in. Linda Cardellina is quite good as both the mother and the person that's afraid of these happenings all around her. Raymond Cruz is kind of the standout here. He has this very dry sense of humor, and as soon as he shows up in the second half of the film, the film picks up quite a bit. But the problem here is that when it comes to the scares and the hijinks, it's all the same stuff that we've seen a hundred times before, just amplified way too much. This film relies almost entirely on jump scares. Whenever someone's walking around the house, for some reason the lights are turned off, and every time they do anything, it goes, oh, oh it's just a cat. Oh, you just knocked a book over. Everything that happens inside of the movie, it just keeps doing jump scares, in which case, those aren't actual scares. That's called startling someone. That's just a reaction. When something happens suddenly and loud, you go, oh, what was that? It's not actually doing something to unnerve people, and it's a very cheap, gimmicky way to get a reaction out of people. So while I enjoyed the cast here, especially Raymond Cruz, the movie overall is just 
Land. Number four is Annabelle Comes Home. There's a pretty big quality jump from The Curse of La Llorona to this film, and I enjoyed this one a good bit. A big part of that, it's very Warren-centric. I'll talk about them more when we get into The Conjuring 1 and 2, but what this film did really well is kind of show us their home life, and in particular, how what they do would affect their daughter, which kind of grounds things a little bit. Also, with this film, it has a nice set of side characters that seem above average for this genre, whether you're talking about a pizza guy that actually was a bit of a scene stealer, or Bob got, Bob's Got Balls, who is this side character that adds some levity into the mix, but feels like an awkward teenager that you would actually know. And as it comes to the scares, since it kind of went for a more contained vibe, um, it, it, it felt like they were a little bit more earned. It did some creepy things where it built tension, faked you out where you thought the jump scare was coming, and then it came from somewhere else. It's still jump scares, but they felt a little bit more warranted inside of this film. What kind of knocked it back a little bit for me was the babysitter's friend character that almost was a good character, but they overplayed the part of her as the dumb teenager. They tried to balance it by giving her a backstory that explained her actions, and the mix of the, the backstory with the dumb teenager behavior, I, I just couldn't buy into it, and it was pretty frustrating for me. If they tightened up that character a little bit, this movie might have been a little bit higher on the list. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to share your ranking down below in the comment section. My ranking's not the right one, it's just my list, and I would love to see yours. Also, if you've enjoyed this ranking, check out this playlist up above. It's got all of my big horror franchise rankings that I've done thus far. So if you want Halloween, it's in there. If you want Child's Play, it's in there. I got Saw, Insidious, Friday the 13th. I haven't quite done all of the big ones yet, but I've done a lot of them. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check that out. In third place is Annabelle Creation. This was such a great step up from the first Annabelle film. I went into this movie not excited at all, and it absolutely won me over through both its setting as well as just the narrative that it kind of told inside of it. It kicks off with a tragedy that sets up this scenario where there's a mystery as to what exactly is going on at this house and what exactly did these people do. The homeowners, each of them has a nice presence on screen that adds a side to them where they have a warmth. You feel that they're real maternal and paternal type people, but at the same time, something creepy is going on here. And when it comes to the scares, what the movie doesn't do is what I just mentioned before, which was all these jump scares. Instead, it builds an atmosphere of tension and creepiness, and all the times you think that there's going to be a jump scare, it's actually usually a false misdirect, and we're supposed to be unsettled by what's going on all around us. Add to the mix, the movie has a bunch of just gross, disturbing images. There's the girl with the crackling body, the scene where the, the dad is holding the cross and his fingers keep getting snapped back. All these types of shots stick inside your brain. This is how you do a Conjuring spinoff the right way that builds the mythology, tells a solid story, and has some great scares and images inside of it. Our runner-up is The Conjuring 2. This is another solid outing for the Warrens who I'll elaborate on when we get to our number one pick. This time inside the film, we actually kind of dive into the toll that what they do takes on them and why it does so. So you have some kind of deeper connections to them and builds on what was established in the first film. This film also adds the dynamic of adding the press into the mix and people that are skeptical as well as other people that are believers into the mix. And it's these details that distinguish the two Conjuring films from the films lower on this list. It explores these ideas of possession and haunted houses from different angles and the way they would be perceived by different people in a way that feels grounded and in the real world as, well, they're based off of real life events. In a lot of ways, this film does improve upon the original film as it's bigger, has extra layers stacked on top of it, and does some very cool things with what they explore here. At the same time, that might be why it kind of got knocked back a little bit for me as it tries to do a little bit too much. When you're dealing with the Warren's personal struggles, the nun kind of following them around, a prophecy, the actual story that's involved in all this, the press getting involved, doubters, believers, there's so many things they're trying to juggle that I don't think it was quite as tight as it needed to be throughout the runtime, but still a great film in the franchise. In first place is The Conjuring. James Wan just did such a good job of establishing the tone, the aesthetics, and the world of these films 
films. Like, you can just set aside the scary movie aspect of these films. I just like James Wan's attention to detail inside of these films. You feel like you go back into the settings from the music choices, the color palette, the attention to the technology that they're using inside of it. You feel like you're going back in time. Add to that, they get a great set of actors to fill all the different roles throughout the film, so they just bring a more believable side to it. They're not going for flashy horror movie type people. They're going for people that just feel like people. The key ones here being Ed and Lorraine, who of course are based off of actual people that had these adventures, and they're played in these films as just a normal married couple who happen to have a very interesting job, but they have a nice rapport with each other, they flirt with each other, and there's nothing flashy about any of it. They're just people with a job to do, and that's what I love about these films. Add to that, James Wan made the wise choice of going with practical effects for the scares, for the demon possession. All the stuff that happens is largely actual practical effects. There's this horrifying hair pulling sequence inside of it that you're just watching like, oh, that is so unsettling to look at. Put all that together and you don't just get the best film inside this franchise. You get one of the best films inside of this subgenre altogether. So The Conjuring comes in at number one. If you enjoyed this video, remember to check out that playlist right over there for more horror rankings just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.